Wetlands and oyster reefs are the nurseries of the ocean. They support marine life and help clean coastal waters. But development along the North Carolina coast is changing natural habitats. In the second of our three-part series on estuaries, Dr. Tom Linden shows us how some groups are restoring these habitats. Seventh graders from Beaufort Middle School are taking their science lesson out of the classroom and down to the estuary, where rivers meet the salty ocean. Today's assignment, chart the health of this marsh. Pull it out. Very good. Oh, excellent job. Excellent job. Students take now sediment samples to assess that oxygen that flow. They also note the variety of plants growing within a square meter. I like it. It just gives us a chance to see things, um, just get our hands on it, like hand, hands on. So, so, and then it lets us know what's in our backyard. <laughs> Ecologists say wetlands help to clean coastal waters and prevent erosion by stabilizing the shoreline between high and low tides, the intertidal zone. Just north of Moorhead City in the Newport River, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers designed and constructed this salt marsh in 1994 to restore habitat altered by coastal development. The Corps of Engineers built this marsh from an island of sand and sediment deposits from previous dredging. Bulldozers dug below old layers of sediment to create a new land and seascape. The Corps then planted grasses to simulate a natural marsh. The marsh is now a thriving habitat more than a decade after construction. Army Corps of Engineers biologist Chuck Wilson helped design the project. An important thing to uh ecosystem restoration is to construct a site that's sustainable and the indicators of sustainability are that the habitats are persistent that they uh, can recover from from stresses such as hurricanes and that they're colonized by the animals that you would expect to to live in a naturally occurring salt marsh Wilson says wildlife like periwinkle snails and fiddler crabs thrive in and around the marsh the uh, salt marsh cord grass and the salt meadow hay that's in the the marsh buffer were planted as a part of this project the, the other species that you see here uh, have have naturally colonized the site so it's it's growing and involving in a in a healthy way just like the uh, natural marshes do eight miles east of moorhead city at north river farms the north carolina coastal federation is doing a different kind of wetland restoration between 1999 and 2002, the Coastal Federation purchased 4,000 acres of North River farms to convert farmland to wetlands. The project borders the 44,000 acre open grounds farm, which the Coastal Federation says is the largest farm east of the Mississippi River. The Coastal Federation is trying to slow runoff from both farms to cut pollution downstream, a project welcomed by Open Grounds Farm. Habitat restoration specialist Sarah King oversees the project. So what we wanted to do with this project was to slow that water down as it was flowing out. And so instead of having it go straight into the estuary, this water now flows across all of this area back in here and is slowed and infiltrates through the wetlands and through the soil that we have there before it ever goes into our estuary. King says stormwater carries sediments and fertilizers from crops into drainage ditches and from there to the North River and into the estuary. Duke Marine ecologist William Kirby Smith monitors water quality. He tests for sediments, bacteria from animal waste, and nutrients from crop fertilizers used in North River farms. What we would like to do in the restoration is to alter this water quality back to the natural water quality and the natural quantity of flow that we had before the farm was here. The Coastal Federation and engineers from North Carolina State University are clearing fields to create a floodplain that will absorb water like a sponge before it reaches the nearby North River. Planting of cypress trees by volunteers also helps slow runoff from fields to the estuary. Fish and animals can't thrive in a polluted estuary, and neither can chip grise, who fishes in Core Sound for spot, a popular commercial species. He says wetlands purify the water and support marine life. I take it to be that's a 
It's a natural process. That's the way it's always been. Like fish, oysters need good water quality to be suitable for human consumption. At Hoop Pole Creek near Atlantic Beach, the North Carolina Coastal Federation is building oyster reefs to improve water quality. Oysters act as one of the estuary's best natural filters. The Coastal Federation says one oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. Oysters form a reef by growing in clumps, providing surface area for other oysters to grow. Sarah King says the restoration process starts with collecting discarded oyster shells. So what we have going on here, we have an oyster stockpile. This is a really small one um, for us. And we have volunteers that will come out here um, and use shovels and use their hands and actually bag the shell and put them into these bags over here. These are our mesh oyster bags. Um, they are about 20 pounds each and they are full of old oyster shell. The bags then go to an oyster hatchery, like this one run by Skip Kemp, a marine biologist at Carteret Community College in Moorhead City. Kemp seeds the shells with oyster larvae. He then keeps the shells in the estuary for two to three weeks to let the larvae grow. But the hatchery plays a real important part in the restoration of oysters because we can produce millions of larval oysters and set them on the shells. The shells which then seeded with oysters can be put back out to jumpstart a new reef rather than just putting the uh, empty shells hoping that they will attract baby oysters. When the oyster larvae reach this size, volunteers can plant them at a reef like the one at Hoop Pole Creek. So what we did was we just laid a little layer of shell down here and then we put the shells with the larvae attached to them already, the spat, the baby oysters, out here on top of that. So we just created a little reef environment and then over time this will develop and start to be a functional um, working reef. Environmentalists say creating oyster reefs, wetlands and marshes are all ways to restore natural habitats and improve water quality. Grants from the North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund support the restoration projects at Hoop Pole Creek and North River Farms. The General Assembly established the fund in 1996 to improve water quality across the state. Tomorrow in the last of our three-part series on estuaries, we'll talk about the tasty blue crab and threats to its commercial fishery. This series was produced in cooperation with the UNC at Chapel Hill School of Journalism and Mass Communication. The production team included Jessica Stumps, Davina Van Buren, and Yasmin Khan.